Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is video 4.5 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video provides a step-by-step -step description of how to obtain large bore femoral arterial access and how to close it. In the setting of percutaneous coronary intervention, large bore access is needed for hemodynamic support, either with the impella device or the tandem heart or the A ECMO. These are the steps of using the impella device, for example, and the first step is the arterial access, uh, then pre-closing, and then the last step is to removing the impella device. In this video, we will be discussing achieving hemostasis for large bore access using double uh, per close sutures prior to inserting the large bore sheath. So here are the steps for obtaining and closing a large bore arterial axis in the femoral side. The steps on the left are the standard steps for obtaining arterial axis. Of particular importance is to perform fluoroscopy of the femoral head to achieve entry at the middle or lower part of the femoral head into the femoral artery using ultrasound guidance to confirm we have front wall puncture, and also performing femoral angiography to confirm that the artery is big enough without significant disease to allow insertion of the large arterial cannula or sheath. When it comes to per-closing, the steps have been described in a separate video, but of key importance are to prepare the track all the way to arteriotomy very well to allow delivery of the sutures, the per-close sutures, and then to perform a femoral angiogram at the end to confirm that hemostasis has been achieved without any femoral access complications. So starting first with femoral access, this is described uh, carefully in video 4.2 and is done as per standard practice. This is an example of a patient in whom there is a good access point. The access is uh, in the middle part of the femoral head. The femoral artery seems to be of large enough caliber. This is a good enough case for inserting a large bore access. It was an impeller for this particular patient. Moving on to the per close steps. The plan is to insert the per close devices before inserting the large sheath into the femoral artery to allow then closure of the arteriotomy once the large sheath is removed. And this is done as described in video 11.3, with the main difference from that video is to perform femoral angiography at the end of the removal of the sheath or cannula to confirm that actually there is good hemostasis being achieved. Very important to prepare the track carefully to allow the sutures to go all the way down to the arteriotomy. And then the difference from the standard per close for a smaller sheath, such as 6 to 8 French sheath, is that uh, for larger arteriotomies, two sutures are deployed. And they are deployed, the first one, with um, the device rotated slightly counterclockwise at around 10 to 10.30 o'clock. And then the second suture is deployed with the device rotated slightly clockwise at 1.30 to 2 o'clock. This way, there are two sutures going across the arteriotomy that help seal it after the sheath is removed. And this is a video showing how the steps are performed. We have obtained access. We have performing geography showing that the artery is of good caliber. And now we are dilating the track all the way to the arteriotomy, first with a scalpel and now with a hemostat. And this way we can ensure that the sutures will reach all the way to the arteriotomy to help achieve hemostasis. After this is done, then a per close device is inserted into the arteriotomy. We do not want to insert it before removing actually the O35 guide wire. So the O35 wire is removed and then with a slight forward motion, the device is inserted. We now have good blood flow. And then we rotate the device slightly clockwise at approximately 10 o'clock. The foot is pulled back, the device is pulled against the artery wall. And then the first suture is deployed. After this is done, as per standard manner, we remove uh, the needles and then uh, cut the suture. Then the foot goes down, the device is pulled back, and then we use the uh, port into the per close device to reinsert the O35 or O38 guide wire into the femoral artery. And then that keeps us uh, having access into the femoral artery. 
Once the device is removed, then the next step is to arrange the sutures so that they don't become entangled with the sutures that will be deployed subsequently. And one way to do this is to, do, to use hemostats with some yellow boots that can help uh, separate those sutures and have one on one side of the arteriotomy and the other on the other side. Now here is the second device that is being inserted. Similar to before, the wire is removed, the device is inserted, there is good blood flow. The device is rotated approximately 2 o'clock, the foot is pulled back, and then the second suture is deployed in a slightly different orientation than the original suture. Then the suture is once again cut, and now we do have uh, two sutures across the arteriotum. The foot is placed down and the device is removed. Once again, we're going to use the port of uh, the uh, per-close device to reinsert the 0.035 wire into the arteriotomy. And this way, we now have access to the vessel and um, we can use it to insert the large bore sheath. Sometimes um, stiff wires are used for these large bore sheaths and this is definitely something that can be done either directly through the per-close device or to be safer. It can be done after inserting a standard sheath and then using a diagnostic catheter, usually a JR4, to insert the stiff guide wire all the way up to the ascending aorta. Another way for keeping the sutures organized is to use the small insulin syringes. The sutures are actually inserted into a small insulin syringe and what this does is it keeps them organized so then we have one small syringe that contains one of the sutures. And then we do the same thing on the other side, putting a small syringe to contain the suture that has placed, uh, was placed uh, with the second device deployment. So one uh, syringe over here and then repeating the same process. And then uh, by doing that, um, we do have now the sutures nicely organized around the arteriotomy. So now we are ready to insert the impella sheath, which is 14 friends for the impella CB device. We have inserted a stiff guide wire through a large dilator. We do dilate the arteriotomy to make sure we have enough room. And then once um, the dilation is done with increasing size um, dilators that come together with the impella kit, then the 14 friends assembly of the dilator and the peel away sheath is inserted into the arteriotomy. It is important to advance gently with slight uh, rotation to enable insertion of the sheath into the femoral artery, which went uh, well here. And then uh, we remove the dilator and now we do have access into the vessel. And we are ready to proceed with insertion of the impella device. Also very important to flush the sheath. At this point, we need to have uh, an ACT of 250 or more to minimize the risk of having thrombus forming around the seat. Now, after doing that, it is important to do an angiogram because sometimes what can happen, as in this case, after inserting the impella seat, there was no more flow into the lower extremity. And actually, in this case, there was surgical repair performed. The patient did have a large piece of calcium that was displaced and caused the occlusion of the vessel. Then at the end, the surgeons reinserted the impella sheath and then we were able to proceed with the procedure. The procedure is now completed. The impella device is out. The impella sheath is still in. And it's now time to remove the impella sheath and achieve hemostasis. To do this, we remove the sutures from the small insulin syringes and use the shared knot pusher to insert it over the blue wire on both sides. So this was done here for the suture placed uh, um, on the left side of the sheath, and then the same thing is done for the blue suture on the other side. And now we have the shared knot pushers ready to go and advance the suture all the way to the arteriotomy once um, things uh, are on the, once the sheath is removed. Then uh, this is a two operator maneuver. One operator is holding the blue sutures along with the knot pushers, and he's ready to deliver the knots all the way down to the arteriotomy once the sheath is removed. So once the operator is ready, 
the other operator maintains wire position into the vessel and then removes the impeller sheath, then holds pressure to prevent any bleeding. Another option is to inflate a balloon higher up in the common iliac artery. And then the other operator pushes down the notch to achieve uh, hemostasis. If uh, there is still bleeding, an option is to insert another perclose suture or sometimes to use an angiosil device to facilitate hemostasis. And then once uh, the hemostasis is achieved and we're happy, we remove the O35 or O38 wire. Once again, we make sure we push the knot all the way down. Then the knots are locked by pulling on the white sutures. And um, now we are ready to cut the sutures, which is done with a, a suture cutter. It's advanced all the way down to the arteriotomy. Then the red level is pulled up. We cut and we've successfully removed the sheath. Sometimes there is a little bleeding and manual pressure may need to be placed for some time. Key part after closing the large arteriotomy is to perform femoral angiography to ensure we don't have any problem. This is another example of a case in which at the beginning of the case there was uh, not good flow, but nevertheless, after consulting with the surgeons, we decided to proceed with the PCI. And on the end, we removed uh, the impeller sheath and tightened up the perclose sutures we had used. And actually, it turned out that uh, there was good flow to the lower extremity afterwards. It was just uh, a large size, large size impeller sheath relative to the size of this femoral artery. So to summarize, large bore femoral access is obtained in the standard manner. And then when it comes to closing, there are other options, such as using the Manta device, but if uh, the double perclose suture is used for hemostasis, the standard steps are followed, placing two perclose sutures, one with slight counterclock and one with slight clockwise rotation, and then uh, tightening the sutures at the end of the procedure after removing the sheath, and then at the end performing femoral angiography to confirm that the femoral artery has been intact. Thank you.